how can I get involved in this company? So let me give a piece, let me get a piece of this company. Now imagine if your great, great grandfather was part of this great American story, this great American icon of a business. And for over a century, your family never got credit. Guess what? It's time to get to work. So have you ever looked upon millionaires or even met a millionaire and asked yourself this question? What's the difference between them and me outside of a million dollars? You ever ask yourself that question? I mean, have you ever sized them up? Is it networking? Is it financial planning? What's the difference? And I believe that this answer is very simple but massively misunderstood. You see, when faced with failure or rejection or setbacks, millionaires tend to get better and not bitter. And with everything going on around us in this economy, hyperinflation, layoffs, furloughs, insecurity with one's job, it's leading you to one direction. And what is that? It's there for you, need, not only want to, but need to start making a million dollars a year. Cash flow. So how we turn things around so things start working in your favor? I'll break that down in this episode of how not to get bitter, but to get better in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad happening in three, two, one, let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jeter. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas, the new home of the Seven Figure Squad. And as I said before, in this episode, I'm gonna break down the three simple steps in the process that millionaires use to separate from the pack. But before we get into today's episode, I want to do an affirmation to help you affirm, put in the comment section below, that I am going to be a first generation millionaire. Boom, put in the comment section below. Type it out, read it out loud, sound it out, and make that your reality. That being said, I wanna quickly remind you, our next goal here at the Seven Fear Squad YouTube channel is to get to 150,000 subs. Why? Because once we hit that goal, we're going to be giving $5,000 away to a church, charity, or nonprofit that we will crowdsource together once we get to that benchmark. And we'll be sending that church, charity, or nonprofit a check in the community of the Seven Fear Squad's name to help them out. So if you've got a church, charity, or nonprofit in mind, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and drop it in the comments section below who we should be supporting. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get into today's episode. Now, if you're with us 90,000 subscribers ago, back in 2019, I broke down the three different types of income that millionaires make. Well, in that episode, I broke down the ultimate source of income, which was portfolio income. Now, this is the type of income you make off dividends, which are checks, cash flow, that you earn from stocks or from business interests. Bottom line, this is income that doesn't sleep. It's a 24 seven money working for you round the clock. Now, to help you explain this three-step process in which millionaires get better and not bitter, I'm going to be introducing a special company that our family had introduced to me that we were able to invest in. The name? Uncle Nearest Whiskey Company. Now, the story of this company is like none other and explains better versus bitter to the T. But first, let's give the story some context. Who was Uncle Nearest? Well, Uncle Nearest, otherwise known as Nathan Nearest Green, was the first ever master distiller of Jack Daniels. I mean, you've heard of Jack Daniels Liquor Company, right? I mean, who hasn't? Well, the truth is, who mentored Jack Daniels to make whiskey, to be a master distiller of whiskey the world knew about, was an emancipated slave named Nathan Nearest Green. And sadly, during the optics of that time, back in the 18 post-Civil War days, a whiskey company had a hard time having the optics and the promotion of an emancipated slave helping a liquor company obtain success. And for many, many years, the Jack Daniels Liquor Company did not give credit to this emancipated slave known as Nearest Nathan green and the story was hidden for quite some time that is until my sister's good friend fawn weaver exposed the story dug deep into the story and said let me look at the deed book let me look into the history here in lynchburg tennessee and oh my gosh there was the proof to the point where jack daniel says you know what yes nathan nearest green was a mentor to jack daniels you should see all the pictures that are around the distillery pictures that have been seen online and posted online, Nearest Green's descendants right next to Jack Daniels. So the first wave of investors went down. I said, hey, told my sister, hey, Joe, how can I get involved in this company? I said, let me give a piece, let me get a piece of this company. Make a long story short, I was able to obtain some founder stock of this company. 
and just a little fraction of this company is what we'll be able to get birth to. And that began the process of me celebrating the story and being a part of history to say, hey, we're able to fund and finance this thing to expose this great story of an American history. Now imagine if your great great grandfather was part of this great American story, this great American icon of a business. And for over a century, your family never got credit. Well, you've got two choices. One is an emotional response and one is a logical response. Which leads me to point number one. Utilize logic, not emotion. See, the sad part is when you're angry, when you feel you've been offended, when you feel you've been cut out, it's very easy for logic to go down and emotions to go up. The idea here is to use less emotion, higher logic. Because when the opposite is true, you end up making very, very bad decisions that you later regret. Now, when Fawn Weaver discovered the story, guess who she still found working at Jack Daniels Distillery? The descendants of Nearest Green still working there. Now, make a long story short, she says, hey, what do you guys want to do? They've admitted to the story. She says, you know what, Fawn, they've taken care of us. We've got jobs here, we've been employed here, and we're good. However, with that being said, you know, We've got some recipes here that has been handed down for multiple, multiple, multiple generations that has never been given birth or given to light until now. Because Fawn Weaver had an idea. Let's start a liquor company. Let's start a whiskey company in the name of your great, great grandfather, Uncle Nearest Green. Now Fawn and her husband, with their own money, put together a million dollars of their own money, and boom, is hey, let's create this company. And next thing you know, they're raising a round of investments from other investors. And next thing you know, they created this company called Uncle Nearest. And today, this is the fastest growing liquor company, spirits company ever in the history of America. The board is multicultural. Diversity is in the fabric of this company. It's a woman-led company and the only liquor company, spirits company in the United States of America that's run by a CEO that is a black woman. That's how you get better and not bitter. So if you feel you're going to adopt this process, this way of processing issues, when you've been set back, you've been marginalized, put in a comment section below, I will use less emotion, more logic. Which leads me to the second point, assess the situation. Now, if you wanna get your financial life together, you gotta assess your situation, you gotta figure out and take inventory of what you have. Yes, you already understand what the problem is, you already know what's wrong, but you gotta figure out what are your weapons, what are your opportunities, what are your areas of interest that you have to work with. Now, the descendants of Uncle Nearest Green said, you know what, let's bring up these recipes. Let's take on what has been handed to us, which is basically a distilling process for a whiskey using African skills and techniques to using charcoal to make whiskey that everybody would fight for. And more importantly, that everybody would love. And by the way, it's a side note. Every time I go to a uh, liquor store and I ask, do you have Uncle Nearest whiskey? You know what a lot of these store owners say? What is it about this whiskey, I can't keep it on the shelves. Everybody comes here asking about it. And it's been the most awarded whiskey and or bourbon in both 2019 and during the pandemic in 2020. The inspiration in the recipes for these whiskeys has been so profound. There's multiple blends, just like what you see right before me right now. And would you like to know who the master distiller is to Uncle Nearest Whiskey? It is Victoria Edie Butler, who is the fifth generation master distiller the great, great granddaughter of Uncle Nearest Green. Check that out. And this is all due to them assessing the situation, not getting bitter, but more importantly, they got better. Which leads me to my third point, execute. Now, once you know the problem, and once you know the solution, and once you got a game plan, guess what? It's time to get to work. So you can do all this planning, all the strategizing, and let's do these forecasts, let's do these projections. Guess what? Nothing is going to replace you rolling up the sleeves and executing upon that game plan. One thing that my brother-in-law were talking about was we're sitting there having a cigar on the uh, nearest green distillery property. We're looking up about all this stuff and like, wow, isn't it amazing what Fawn Weaver and the Uncle Nearest team has done? Just amazing in their execution. It's amazing how they've implemented. Right now, it's known as the number one black-owned business in the liquor industry ever, ever. Look at things professionally done, dotting the I's, crossing the T's, the shareholder reports that it gets after every quarter, the annual report that it gets from this company, the professionalism all across social media in the mainstream media about the story of Uncle Nears Green. Think about this, 10 quarters in a row of 100% growth. And then during the pandemic, instead of laying people off and being furloughed, here's what happened. 
All the other distributors were laying off their people. All the other restaurants and restaurateurs and lounges, sadly, they had to lay off their people. Well, guess what Uncle Nearest did? They didn't lay off or furlough people. Guess what they did? Because they realized that talent is out there. Skilled people are out there. People with relationships were out there, laid off and furloughed. And guess what Fawn Weaver and Uncle Nearest did? They doubled down during the lockdown. They doubled down during the pandemic. And what did they do? Hired them to work at Uncle Nearest. Stack now with talented and experienced people. Now think about what Fawn Weaver and her team has done there at the Uncle Nearest company. To be able to say, hey, we've created a brand and the tagline being the greatest whiskey maker that the world never knew. And they have a large part of understanding, hey, Black history made such an impact on American whiskey and now we've exposed that story and here's the impact of the story. Instead of getting bitter about it, they got better about it and now the family's profiting from it, the investor are profiting from it and bottom line, the consumer is profiting. American businesses are profiting from them getting better and not bitter. So if that's you, say, Matt, I want to do the same, put in the comment section below. I will execute upon my millionaire dreams. Is I wrap stuff up and put things all together, make this a great reminder to you, you always have a choice to either get bitter about a situation where you feel that things are out of your control, or you can assess the situation as, you know what, let me control what I can control and let me get better. And also as a quick reminder that getting bitter is one of the worst mistakes you can ever make in your entire life. And if you want to avoid more of those mistakes to avoid, that keep you from obtaining your multi-million dollar goals and aspirations, watch this video right here. And if you wanna know more about the three different types of email you can make, please watch this video right here too as well. With that being said, let me know your biggest feedbacks, your questions, your thoughts, your follow your comments. Drop them in the comment section below because yes, we read them and we reply to them. And by the way, as a side note, there's a lot of trolls and scam artists out there. We're not trying to get you to invest in anything Bitcoin or cryptocurrency or anything at all. Please be careful of fake accounts out there that are representing the seven figure squad. And as a quick reminder, our next milestone is to get to 150,000 subs. Why? Because at that point, we'll be awarding $5,000 to that church, charity, or nonprofit that we nominate and that we will support based on your comments and nominations in the comment section below. So if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your Money Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.